Hello Coyotes, my name is Avery. I am Miss Corey's student teacher for art and I'll be able to work with you guys for the rest of the semester. I actually started during intercession so I was only able to meet just a few of you. I know I haven't been able to meet all of you um, but I'll still be able to teach you guys and work with you remotely from home. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about myself and then we will talk about our art challenge for the week and a new technique, which is photography. So like I said, I'm a college student. I currently go to UTA. Um, I'm studying art and education, so I'm studying to be an art teacher. And here I am with some friends outside our uh, one of our mascots, which is the, the Maverick Horse. Uh, I have two dachshunds, Gretel and Sophie, um, and Gretel is the one that's a little bit closer to the camera, and Sophie's the one behind her. Um, and I also have a leopard gecko who's pretty cool, and her name is Juniper. So some other things about me, I really like music. I like playing music, playing guitar. Um, I really enjoy traveling when we can. Uh, and most of all, I really, really, truly love art. It is my absolute favorite thing to do. It's my it's my passion. Um, here's a couple examples of some stuff that I've made, but I work in all sorts of mediums, sculpture, painting, drawing, um, photography, which we'll talk about today. And the thing I was most excited to tell you guys about is that I am also an Alice Carlson alum. So I graduated in 2007, I believe, from Alice Carlson. And so here I am in the library. I'm right here. And a fun fact is that I was actually a student when we voted on the mascot of Coyote. And I remember it was between the snails, the ants, and the coyotes. And I voted for the snails, which it's probably a good thing that that didn't win. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about photography techniques. Um, and I wanted to kind of tell you guys about some of the different types of photography because there's a lot of things in the world that you can take pictures of um, and then I'll talk about some tricks that I have for you guys to take some really great pictures. So one type of photography is called landscape photography and that would be taking pictures of nature, um, large outdoor spaces, and one of the most famous photographers of all time his name was Ansel Adams and so this is one of his photographs um, called Cathedral Peak and Lake at Yosemite National Park. Uh, he took a lot of photos at Yosemite, which is in California. Um, and he was so famous because he was able to get very, very, very clear pictures. You can see everything in detail really well. Another type of photography is portrait photography. Uh, this picture is by a portrait photographer named Steve McCurry. Um, and portrait photography is photos that focus on people. So you're trying to take a picture where you can see see usually somebody's face. Another really uh, another really common type of photography is still life photography, which is photos of objects. And that's a lot of different things. There's a lot of objects. So here's two very different examples. We have on the left um, the Still Life with Silverware by Jan Groover, which is just a photograph of forks and knives and spoons, but it creates very interesting lines, which is something that you guys are used to doing when you're drawing, right? We draw with lines, and the difference with photography is that instead of creating the, the interesting things, we are kind of playing detective and we're looking for the interesting things to take pictures of. And then the picture on the right is a photograph by a photographer named Mitchell Wu, who I thought you guys might might get some ideas from because he takes pictures of toys and he arranges them like they're alive and takes photos of them. So I have another example from him um, later on. And another type of photography is called architectural photography, which is taking photos of buildings. Um, and I have two more examples here. Uh, the first one is by an artist named Hiroshi Sujimoto. He's a really famous photographer. And this is a picture of a theater. 
And then the other example is called the Generali Tower by Marco Tagliarino. And the interesting thing about architectural photography is, um, kind of like I was saying before, we're well, kind of playing detective to find to find what looks interesting. And instead of drawing it or painting it or sculpting it, we are taking a picture of it. So now I have a few little pieces of advice or tips so that you guys can take some really great photos. And my first piece of advice is to make sure that you're keeping your camera on your subject. So your subject is what you're trying to take a picture of. So let's look at this first picture. Let's pretend that I was trying to take a picture of those flowers. So I took this picture. Um, when we're looking at this picture, we can see the flowers, but we can also see a chair and we can see the cabinets and we can see the wall. And we don't really know what I was trying to take a picture of. Uh, if we asked two different people, one person may say, oh, it's a picture of flowers. And another person may say, it's a picture of some cabinets. So you want to make sure that your camera is on the thing that you're trying to take a picture of. And so if we look at this other picture, this is by an African artist named Gurma Berta. We don't see a bunch of other stuff in the picture. We just see the two subjects, which are these two men wearing these umbrella hats. And so the photographer kept their camera on their subject so that we know what the picture is supposed to be of. My next tip is to make sure that your subject is in focus. So cameras kind of work like our eyes. If we're not looking right at something, we can't see it very clear. So your camera kind of works the same way. It has to know what to look at. So in this picture, we can see that the camera is looking at the flower and the butterfly, and it's not looking at the background. So if it's not looking at the background, that means that it's blurry or it's out of focus. Um, another tip would be to make sure that you hold your camera really still when you take pictures so that it doesn't get blurry. Um, one thing that you can try if you're using a phone, uh, especially an iPhone, whenever you are about to take your picture, you can actually touch your screen over your subject and it will focus on that subject. So that would be something that you can try. My next tip is to check what's in your background. So if we look at this picture, I was trying to take another picture of some flowers. We can see the cabinet again, but we can also see my dog's beds and we can see dog toys. You can actually see my dog right here. And it kind of goes back to what I was talking about beforehand. We don't really know what it is that I was trying to take a picture of because it looks kind of distracting. There's a lot of things in the background. So whenever you're taking your pictures, you need to make sure that you're looking for, do I have some dirty socks laying in the background? Do I have some toys that maybe I need to pick up um, to make sure that you create a really interesting picture? Because when we draw or when we paint, we are only putting in what we want in the picture. We're not adding in our dirty socks or our toys that we're laying around. So you shouldn't do that in your pictures either. And the other picture over here, we can tell that there is nothing else in the picture except for our subject, which is this little bicycle wheel. And my last little tip for you guys is to get closer. When you get closer, it helps us understand what it is we're supposed to be looking at. So I took one final picture with, with my, um, of my flowers, and in this one, I got a lot closer. And so that we can tell that these are definitely flowers, and I wasn't trying to take a picture of a cabinet or my dog's toys or anything else. I was trying to take a picture of flowers. And I included another picture by Mitchell Wu um, of... We see Woody and some kind of monster behind him. And so these toys are probably pretty small. So he had to get a lot closer so that we knew exactly what he was taking a picture of. If he stood far away, the toys would be really, really small in the picture. and We wouldn't be able to tell what 
he was trying to focus on. So these are my little tips that I have for you guys for taking really great pictures, but I think the most important thing is that you take a lot of pictures. If you're focusing on one thing, you should take 5, 10, 15 pictures of it until you can choose the one that looks the best. So now I'm going to introduce to you guys our topic for the week. Um, so our topic is gratitude. And so what is gratitude? Gratitude is to be grateful or thankful for something. So you can think about what is it that you're glad that you have? Uh, what people are you glad that you have? Um, what things are you thankful for? So are you grateful or thankful for maybe your family? Are you grateful for your parents, your grandparents, your siblings? Um, are you grateful for your friends? Are you grateful for maybe your pets or the things that you have? It could be your teachers. It could be uh, maybe your favorite food. It could be any number of things. So for this week, I want you guys to think about what it is that you are grateful for or what you have gratitude for. And our art challenge for the week is to create an artwork of something that you are grateful for. So you get to pick your subject. It is up to you what what you what you choose uh, and you can also choose the medium but if you want to try photography then this would be a really fun opportunity um, what kind of things around your house are you grateful for that you can photograph um, and I'm really excited to see what you guys create for this week all right guys that is it I'm excited to see what you guys create and what you're grateful for and I will see you next week bye coyotes